So the next thing to tackle on the A500 project is a keyboard. Since I don't have an A500 keyboard laying around, I only see one listed on eBay at $73, I believe, currently, that I don't know works. And because I've ended up with these external Amiga keyboards, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can adapt, create an adapter to adapt the DIN connector here uh, to the keyboard connector on the A500. And in digging around, I really haven't found everything I need to do this. And what I'm going to end up doing in the end is using a piece of ribbon cable and I'm going to solder to the bottom of the PCB to the eight leads. And that'll come out and hopefully get soldered into a DIN connector. I have a bag of circular DIN connectors here that again were picked up surplus someplace. And I'm hoping to find a female five pin. And right there's a female five pin. So that gets us what we need there. That's tight. So the ribbon cable will come into this. This feels like it might actually be new old stock. We'll come into that guy. There's a number of connectors here. Here's a male with ribbon cable actually hanging out of it already. There's just an, an assortment of them here. Almost all male because they were cut off the ends of cables. I don't know by who, but... Again, I found this bag, you know, someplace in a box of surplus stuff. It looks like there was only one female, and it was a 510, and then that female will work for me, so that's a nice sign. Uh, did some digging around on the inter internet, and found various diagrams, uh, several that listed the A2-3000 keyboard, and the pinout seems to be consistent with what I've got here. Again, this is looking into the female connector on the computer where pin 1 is clock, uh, pin 4 is ground, pin 2 there in the center is data, pin 5 is plus 5, and pin 3 is not used, and then of course there's the protective uh, outer shield. So I've mirrored this over here as if I was looking into the end of the keyboard cable here. So this represents the female socket on the keyboard this would plug into. So, really, it's just going to be, hopefully, just a matter of this with uh, five leads ran out of it. And those five leads will come over to the five tie points I have here that I need to get to. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Uh, before I go that far, though, I really kind of wanted to open up the Amiga 2000 keyboard here and just take a peek inside. I have no idea if it's an operational keyboard, but I thought I'd take a look inside and see. I actually have an Amiga, what I believe to be a 1000 keyboard, but it's got uh, broken cursor keys. So I'm going to use this one since all the keycaps are intact. Screws to all lift up out. See if this coffee's you know full of spilt, or this keyboard's full of spilt coffee, something like that, or soda pop. I don't think it is. Based kind of on what I'm feeling typing on it, although there is obviously fluid here on the bottom. This thing needs a major cleaning. But that can be done later. Got one screw that's just being stubborn and doesn't want to drop out of there. There you are. There's all kinds of nastiness falling out of this. Oh, it's filthy inside. I will uh, spend a bit of time and clean. I guess that connector is on tight. There's a TTL device here, 74LS32, so I can verify power and ground. That'll be useful. Oh man, is that ever nasty. I'll do a bit of cleaning off camera as well. 
This stuff really isn't sticky. It's just years of dust and lint. I don't know what all this dirt here is. Hopefully this didn't spend some time outside. I don't know if the board lifts up out. It seems to. It had a couple dabs of double-sided tape. Looks like one time. Holding it down in place. Uh, wow. I'm actually going to do more cleaning on this than I had planned before I try to use it. Just because, as you can see, full of what looks to be dirt. Broke up wood chips. I really don't know. Oh, look at the mess that's dropped out of it here. Uh, I really don't want that mess getting on the back side of the PCB. I don't know what that is. Of course, I don't want to sweep up the screws and throw them away. That would be a bit of a sad moment. Sorry, I'm sweeping the bench, picking up the garbage can to get it here on the edge of the bench so I can sweep directly into it. Man, oh man, is that nasty. Okay, that's better. I'm not quite as spooked about sitting the keyboard back down on here. Get the ohm meter fired up and in continuity mode. Oh, excuse me. And I'm going to hope this guy's operational. I guess I could actually power it up, throw the uh, logic probe on it to see if there's any data happening on the, the data lines. Uh, I need the drawing back wherever it went. Where did the uh, female DIM connector go? Go ahead and open him up. Get a long enough screwdriver to push the connector up out. I'll usually that little plastic tab is what retains it. There's not a screw on here. You can feel it floating around in there. Well, shoot. You need to got you in there so tight. Oh, that plastic slug is really thick. Really, just a two piece. It can be pulled apart. Wow, these usually just fall apart in your hands. I'm actually impressed. There it is. The bottom should come off as well. And we'll get him down into plugged in here. It'll make it a little easier to uh, probe around. 
looking down into the mail end, which is this end here, we have VCC on this pin, and I should see VCC right here, and I do. That's a good sign. I should have ground on that pin, which is a bit tricky to get to, and I do. So it does look like this is probably the pin out. Uh, so really it's just get the five leads soldered up on here and attach the back of the board and see if there's any signs of keyboard life. So should be interesting. I'm going to do this with the keyboard disconnected from the cable just it'll make it a little easier to manipulate. Nice large ground stud there. Wow, that's nasty. I am really going to have to clean. Uh, hopefully the uh, controller chip on there is good. And this thing will actually work. We will find out as we proceed. Oh, that keyboard's nasty. Nasty, nasty. So, I've got a piece of ribbon cable here. I really need six leads because I need a lead to be the uh, protective earth for the shield. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm assuming that's key ground and the two LEDs. At least I assume those fed off the two LEDs. Now I will zip six pins off of this. Or six wires. One, two, three, four, five, six. Has it really got nine leads used and not all ten? No, there's all 10 there, so how did I count that wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Get him to zip back. I don't need a ton of length. I'm going to wire this so the red is on pin one. Pin two of the cable will be on two. So I'm going to follow. I'm going to connect these so that the cable goes pin. You know, you know red is pin one. And next is pin two, etc. And so let's see. One is clock. I'll make pin two data. Don't really have a reset. Plus five on four. Or no, plus five on five. So I really want this cable to be one to one when it's soldered on the back of the board. So get pencil out here. I want ribbon cable pin one to go to here. I want ribbon cable pin 2 to go to here. 3 isn't going to be on here. I want ribbon cable pin 4 I'm really debating whether I should just... No, I want ribbon cable pin 4 which is VCC to go to here. Ribbon cable pin Six. 
six. It's going to come to here. And three isn't used off of there, so there's really going to be four wires out of the six here that'll be connected, but all six of these will be soldered to the six pins on the back of the board just to make it easy. And that'll give it a little bit of extra strength. Even though only four of the leads are used. And there's a bunch of ways you could do this, but I can get these to zip apart without being too painful and damaging the insulation. Why are you being stubborn? One, two, and three, and five. One, two, three, and five. Uh, or is that six? You have key grounds on both five and six. I don't honestly know. You grab the motherboard and we'll take a look. should be a VCC pin, and it is. Five is open. Six is a ground. Okay, so that pin five really is unused. same orientation it is here. So this is looking down into the shell here on the keyboard side. And so VCC will be the second pin over there. So again I need pins one, two, three. Set pin pin one, pin two are needed, pin three can be clipped out since it won't be used. Pin four is VCC, pin five isn't used, so that's the four wires we need. You can remember these are going to be soldered to the back of the board. We need this end will be soldered to the back of the board. And only those four signals need to be brought out. We hopefully have a bit of luck stripping these. It can be a little tricky to do sometimes. 
them together. And pin one on the ribbon cable. I need the other glasses. Quite as blind. Tin that slightly. Make it a little stiffer to get through and pin one. It's going to come through right here. is really ugly. Why is that pin kind of twisted like that? Does it rotate in there? No, it really doesn't. So ribbon cable pin 4 comes through the next pin which is a ground. Tin him up slightly. Don't want a ton of solder, just enough to kind of hold the wires together. This one might be a little bit tricky to get through there. Because uh, that first pin is in the way. It's going to have to come through this way and just be very carefully soldered. three four so pin two is data let me uh, pull him through to this side it'll make it easier to route him Two is going to go to the center pin there.
then the final pin, which is pin 6, oh don't tell me I did this wrong, that was key ground, to pin 4. Did I get that wrong? Pin 1. Oh, how did I get that so wrong? I must have been looking at the inside pins. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah, I got it completely wrong. And of course now I can't pull these back off. It, 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 you know, it never fails. It never fails, no matter how much you plan. Oh, come on. Now I'm starting to get f a little frustrated with this. Hold that, please. With enough tension. That is really irritating. I got that so wrong. Now again, I'm looking down through. Maybe I'm going to cheat here a bit. And to have these come straight back. I won't have great strain relief, but it might make this easier to do. You know, plan and plan and plan, draw things out, can't read your own plan. Of course, on the channel here, mistakes as well get made and just get listed as videos. Pin one to pin one. to go into the hole, not that it's super critical. Pin 1 to pin 1, and then pin 6 really is the next one that I should have had over here. Then ribbon cable pin 2. is what actually went to here. And then ribbon cable pin one, two, three, four goes to pin five. If I was going to do this permanently, I'd be doing a better job. I'd probably be adding a bit of heat shrink. But this is really just a test. And this is going to be interesting to get down there. Oh, the wire's getting hot. So looking down into this connector this way, I've got ribbon cable pin 1 to 1, ribbon cable pin 6 to 4, ribbon cable pin 2 to here, and ribbon cable pin 4 to here. So that really should be what I meant to do the first time around. I want to go ahead and zip these apart, tin them, hopefully I didn't, 
irritating to me that these won't just peel back. This ribbon cable wants to be cut. you're going to be stubborn as you're the last one and the most difficult to manipulate. Strip each one of these down. one of those Hopefully they're actually taking solder length. Bring over the motherboard. We're going to be hitting the back side of this connector. Pin one is over on this side. fresh solder. Is that actually a via and not a pin? That's actually a via. Okay. So pin one is here. There should be two unused pins. That sixth pin was ground, that's why it took so much heat. The component is right there that's so poorly soldered. With the tunnel lead sticking up through. I'm going to come in here this way. And hopefully, just one at a time, be able to tack these on. These actually aren't the glasses I wanted. That's better. Sorry if my big old head's in shot here. Two. 
3, and you can see now why I did this the way I did it so the ribbon cable would lay flat back here. Conform. Making what I'm doing right now a little bit easier to do. Of course, this wire is going to be stubborn. prettiest thing I've ever done. And of course I don't have this strain relief or anything on here. I intentionally left that off. If this is a working solution, I'll unsolder from the board and put this back together right. But for now what I want to do is set the keyboard back up here. This direction because the cable came off this way. I'll go ahead and reattach that protective earth. Stand the motherboard up here. Mate these together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on ground a TTL device here and ground on a TTL device here. Plus five on a TTL device here. Plus five on the motherboard. We have a shot at that working. So The next thing we'll do to be put everything back together so I can boot the machine and we'll see what we get. I'll come back when I have everything put together. I'm trying to get everything in shot here. What I've done at this point is I brought the Amiga up without the keyboard attached and had a boot. I've now got the keyboard attached. Uh, both floppy drives are on. I had issues booting the machine from the two floppies I created yesterday. In the earlier video, I'm not sure why those are giving me trouble. So I'm going to have to make a fresh copy of the Amiga uh, Workbench floppy. I've ohmed out connections and verified that everything seems to be correct here, at least power and ground. So really the next step is to turn the power supply back on, the bench supply. And we'll see what we get. I'll let's see if I can get the disc in quick enough that it'll boot from it. There it goes. Because the disk change doesn't seem to work on this Atari drive with the Amiga. So we are getting the Amiga DOS boot screen. Uh, apologies for the jerky video, but I'll pull the camera out here. You can take a peek and see we are booting. Again, apologies for the jerky video. The, uh, camera mount that I use for above the bench is honestly quite the kludge. It does work. It's an iPod holder with some maker rails and a, a linear slide and just, just kind of stuff that came out of other projects and things. And uh, you know it works. Not the most stable thing. So we are started so I'm going to open up the workbench disk and we will find out here together. And I'm opening up the shell. I'm going to pull back out the camera and we'll take a look at the screen and I'm going to type DIR and by golly we seem to have a working keyboard. Very 
nice. I don't know all the CLI commands. Doesn't know what free is. And I haven't really read the documentation. Q W E R T Y U I O P. Of course, that won't be a real command. Caps lock lights up and goes off. Thought for a minute the B key wasn't working. Oh, the N key isn't working. N and M aren't working. It's just N and M. Always got to be something, doesn't it? Let's see if shift works. Yep, shift works on that side. Shift works on this side. Space works. One of the Amiga keys almost seems to be stuck down. The one to the left. Sorry, I'll let the camera drift. Numeric keypad. I don't know that the cursor keys will do it. Oh, cursor keys are going to move the mouse around for me. So that shows that cursor key works. Helping, let's see if delete deletes. It really wants backspace. Function keys are being ignored. Escape produces a character. So besides the N and the M, which is tragic, not working, we have a pretty functional keyboard. So the next step is now going to be get this cable put together in a, a cleaner sense. Uh, how do I close the shell? We'll exit, close it, quit. Not sure how to close the shell. Let's go ahead and get a blank floppy and drive one. Accessing it. it does say that's the copy of the workbench, so why wasn't it bootable? Why is there a question mark in the prefer for the preferences? Maybe that's normal. Though I don't think so. References have a question mark on the original workbench disk. Or did my playing around yesterday break something? Yeah, it does. So the question is, I guess I'll recopy it. I didn't mean for it to open up the directory. I double clicked. Close this. He's closed out. I'm just simply trying to copy the uh, copy from disk, but copy of Workbench 1.3. Yep. I'm just going to recopy the Workbench disk. Uh, hopefully, it'll boot. I'm not sure there's a whole lot to dive into in, in this segment. I'm going to have to, of course, open the keyboard up and see if I can figure out what's up with N and M. Sucks they don't work. And go for there, but you know, go from there. Everything we do seems to be making progress. So anyhow, so rather than short or shoot this as a separate video, the issue with the N and M keys was the uh, Amiga key here being stuck down, and I was able to get the key cap off, uh, and with it released, N and M works just fine. So it's really not worth shooting another video. Uh, I do need to pull all the key caps off this keyboard and do a deep clean. It is really nasty. Uh, we kind of saw that before. I'm actually making disk backups here, and it's prompting me to put workbench disk in. Doing this the hard way. 
So anyhow, I, I, I'm not going to shoot a separate video on, on what I uncovered here. Because I'll just add this to the end. Well, obviously you're watching it. Of the uh, keyboard video. We'll talk soon.